Namaste. So now our main focus and will be for some time is the Lakshmi Tantra. And Lakshmi Tantra is just amazing. It's wonderful. It's so grand in its scope. It's really a bigger story than any other scripture that we have gone into so far. So here's the link to the series. Huh? You should watch it from the beginning. Now, why do we study Tantra, especially this traditional Tantra? Well, Tan means instructions or procedures, and Tra means protection, like Mantra means protecting the mind. Tantra means protecting instructions, instructions for protection. Protection of what? <laughs> well, protection of ourselves. Why is that? Take a look around you at the world. Read the news, if you dare, <laughs> these days. This place is a mess, and it has been a mess for a long time, if you study history. Why is that? We are in the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is 432,000 years long, and we are just in the first 5,000 years of it. So if you think this is bad, <laughs> of course, there's ups and downs, you know, like in, in the seasons. So there's different periods of Kali Yuga where there may be some relief, but generally speaking, Kali Yuga is a mess. Why is that? Well, it's described in the scriptures in the Srimad Bhagavatam that religion is like a cow or like a bull. And in Satya Yuga, the bull is standing on all four legs, Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. But in Dvapar Yuga, one of the legs is chopped off by, by the Sudra. Huh? Who else would do such a thing? In Treta Yuga, two of the legs are chopped off. And in Kali Yuga, the third leg is chopped, leaving the religion standing on one leg only. And what is that? It's truthfulness. Truthfulness is the only virtue in Kali Yuga. Because cleanliness, austerity, and mercy, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> so of the four virtues that only truthfulness is left, and now we have even like heads of state in major countries who are dedicated liars, propagandists. So Kali Yuga is a big mess. I was just reading in the first chapter of Lakshmi Tantra that there was a time when Indra was cursed. So Indra keeps getting himself in trouble. <laughs> He's so passionate, you know, and he gets cursed by the sages. But what happens when Indra is cursed, because he is the defender of religion, that religion becomes very weakened. And it's described that long ago when this happened, that religion became splintered into many different sects. And as a result, people lost consciousness of God. They lost their virtues. They became cowards, liars. Huh? They had illegitimate children and so many nasty things. Uh, wars were fought that have nothing to do with right and wrong. Wars where even the citizens were killed. Uh, this is like unheard of in Vedic culture. If two kings had, a, had a, an issue, they'd go fight it out on some isolated war, war plane. They wouldn't carry it to the citizens. That's cheating. So in Kali Yuga, Everybody is a cheater, 
Everybody is a rascal. Everybody is a no good. Huh? So how can you be happy in such a world? How can you be satisfied? You'd have to be pretty darn stupid to be satisfied with the state of the world as it is. So what to do? Well, you have to plan to get out, to get out of the earth world and into the heavenly worlds at least. Best thing is to attain moksha, but if you can't do that, at least get a birth in the heavenly planets where your lifespan will be long enough that if you do have to come back to earth, it won't be in the Kali Yuga. It'll be in the next Satya Yuga, 427,000 years from now. <laughs> lifespan in the heavenly planets is very long. So how do you transfer your existence to the heavenly planets? by sadhana. The process of sadhana is given throughout the Vedic literatures in many different forms and flavors. But the thing that they all have in common is that they turn the mind inward. They turn the mind inward and they encourage dreaming. Huh? I'm going to look out now. I'm going to put up the chart, the famous chart of the four Vadas. And you notice in the Vishishtadvaita Vada, where Bhakti Yoga is the process, that the state of consciousness is dreaming. Dreaming sleep. Now, what does this mean? It means that sadhana is a tool to bring one's dreams under one's control and to fashion them according to one's desire so that one develops the consciousness that at the time of death one can transfer to a higher planetary existence. See, and in the next state, vivartavada, one uses meditation to go into sushupti, deep sleep, emptiness, nothingness. And this is the beyond. Uh, this is this approach to liberation, complete liberation. So one has to go through these step by step. You cannot jump up. Now, somebody was making comments. We had a discussion here yesterday on the channel. The poor rascal. <laughs> he wants to jump up right to the highest level. And I said, no, if you do that, it, you know, scholarly knowledge is basically secondhand or thirdhand knowledge. It's not direct perception, prakash. It's basically like rumors and gossips, you know? That's not real knowledge, and there's no way to verify it except by doing the practices. So, I mean, you look at somebody like Ramakrishna Paramahansa. He's practically illiterate, and yet he attained self-realization. How? By doing the practices very intensely for a long time. So I told him, don't, don't become a scholar. That's useless become a practitioner and attain the realization. And he wrote back, I couldn't believe this. He wrote back, he said, I want to be a scholar. I don't want liberation. I have sexual desires. I have a family. I have a business, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, what is wrong with this guy? You don't have to go right away for the liberation. You can go step by step to higher and higher planets. Huh? Swarga, then Tapalok, Maharlok, Janalok, see, and eventually to Satyalok, and then attain liberation from there. See, there's many different paths, many different ways to approach this business of self-realization. 
And of course, the ultimate aim is liberation, moksha. But in between, there's different stages of mukti. And we've been over this in past videos. You can look at this one, for example. But what we're trying to say here is that you should practice Tantra. You should follow these instructions for protection. Protection from what? Rebirth on earth. Huh? You do not want to come back here. It's just going to get worse. So take the opportunity that you have now with the internet. You could get all of the tantric literatures for free. Just download them from archive.org or follow our videos here or follow any number of good teachers who are teaching the sadhana, the practice. Uh, not only the theory. We can't really teach the practices here because they're so personal and so individual. It depends on your personal nature, which practices you do, which deity you approach, and what you do to serve them. But if you take just one practice, okay, for example, my practice is chanting the Maha Sodashi Mantra. We have a whole series on that too. Maha Sodashi is basically the most powerful mantra of the Sri Vidya. And it's also recommended in Lakshmi Tantra, or at least the Bijas, the roots of it. So by chanting this one mantra 24 hours a day, huh, as much as possible, really I've turned my whole life into a very wonderful experience. Now, well, not I have, but the goddess has. <laughs> she has the power because she resides within as Kundalini. So Tantra includes every kind of practice, every kind of meditation, even sexual meditations. So you can do any kind of meditation that appeals to you. The point is to worship the goddess in whatever way, in whatever form, in whatever manner that you can, according to your nature, according to your preferences, according to your likes and dislikes, your individual nature. And this will lead at the end to a next life in a more a wonderful place. Huh? But she will reveal to you where you're going to go in the form of dreams. And by these dreams, you will become confident that you're going to a very wonderful place in the next life. You know, I'm in my 70s now, and looking back at my life, all the things that I thought were so big and important when I was young really weren't. Where are all those people? Huh? Where are all those relationships and those attachments and those things I was so passionate about in my youth? Huh? Where are they now? They're all gone. They're all gone and they are not coming back. So this is the nature of life on planet Earth. But you know, on the higher planets, the mode of goodness is predominant. And this is the difference because on Earth, the mode of passion is predominant and that leads to suffering, which is the mode of ignorance. So if you don't follow this earth program, follow the heavenly program of the mode of goodness, sattvata. Huh? This is sadhana. Sadhana means living like you're already in heaven. See, like brahmacharya. Brahmacharya is often wrongly interpreted as celibacy, and that might be part of it. But the real thing is to live as if you are in Brahman already. Pure consciousness. So this is the point of the Tantras, that don't just settle for 
life on planet Earth, which is full of passion and ignorance and suffering. Rather, approach goodness and saturate your life with it. Make yourself a bona fide devotee of the god or goddess of your choice. It's up to you. Nobody's forcing you. If you can, approach a realized guru because this will multiply your progress by a thousand times. But if you can't do that, take any of the practices given in the scriptures or on, in our video series here and practice them intensely. This is the key. Don't just practice them on and off like a hobby, but practice them intensively as possible and you will very, very soon get the realization that leads to the higher planets. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.